Hello guys, Elfidor Rubio here. Today we're going to have a quick overview on how to use Substance Designer and why should you use Substance Designer in the first place. Now, I talked to the, some of the creators, uh, the world creators on the community, and most of them use a completely different software from one another, which is completely fine. You know, uh, each have their own workflow. Um, but I feel like not a lot of them are aware that Substance Designer is an option. And the reason why you would want to use Substance Designer is because it's um, it's modular. You can tweak things, you can add and subtract, um, you know, and you can always get back to it. That's uh, it's really flexible in that aspect. The other is consistency. When you grab images from the internet, you get like uh, different sizes, different uh, different co different color schemes, different lighting information when you're creating and as long as you're creating within the same template and you know you, you have a consistency there so we're gonna we're gonna recreate this um uh, i guess it's like a um what's it called a mosaic cause mosaic sort of thing uh but yeah it's just a test to demonstrate the power of the program so if you want to follow along feel free i'm just gonna press Control n and it's gonna create it's gonna create a new substance graph. I'm gonna choose physically base in test two. Okay. I'm gonna delete the outputs icon by default when you create a new graph. And I'm gonna search for a base material. I'm gonna choose dielectric and also I'm gonna expose the height so we can actually connect stuff. Now, in order to see uh, the, this base material in the 3D view, you right click and drag and drop. And that's our material so far. It's looking a bit bland, isn't it? So why don't we add some, some actual pieces to this. So let's add a tile generator to get started. Oops, it added on the wrong side. Wrong side, buddy. There we go. Okay, so now, well, we have some tiles and you could perfectly um, use this on your kitchen, uh, on your world, or even your bathroom if you wanted so. Um, there's different patterns that you can choose from in here. I'm just gonna quickly go over some of them, but that's fine. For my, my purpose, since I know what I'm gonna be doing, it's gonna be like a tileable diamond shape. I'm gonna need a square and oops. Everything's gone. Nah, it's there. Uh, what happened there, it's because um, it has a full scale of one here. Uh, things are overlapping, but as soon as I introduce something a bit smaller, like 0.95, you can see we, we, got the, we, we get the gap again. Now, some of the things that you wanted to in your material to make it look more realistic is break uh, a bit the, the lines. In the real world, somebody has placed these tiles. And even though they're they're taking measurements and stuff, there's always gonna be, it's never gonna be like completely straight like it is in here. So we're gonna introduce some randomness to this. Go to the scale random. And if you crank this up like really high, you see the sort of result uh, we're getting, but we're not, but we're looking for something really subtle. So we're gonna try 0.01. And you can see we get some actual variation. Now, I also want, at the moment, uh, they're all the same height. So in order to break that, you scroll down to color. And if you increase the lo luminance by random a bit, um, you start to, see, start to see some of them receding in. Let me crank it up a bit more so it's more visible. Yeah, you, you can sort of see now. Okay, so now uh, the next thing that we need in order to make like a diamond shape, it's to rotate this. And we got a transformation to the for that. In order to reroute things, instead of like constantly having to reconnect, you just uh, click shift and reconnect like this. Okay. So now we got this 
this pattern and we can rotate it if we click on this matrix and if you hold shift it would snap to increments if we rotate 45 degrees we can see we already have uh, what we're looking for but the problem is uh, it's breaking the tile uh, of the of the pattern this happens when you rotate things on a non degree on a non 90 degree increment so in order to fix that we're going to go in here into the matrix and we're just going to put the values manually 1 1 and minus 1 and we already got our diamond now it's still looking a bit flat like normally things like this have imperfect imperfections like cracks and stuff so why don't we add some why don't we add some cracks let's choose um gosh and noise maybe yeah maybe that would do and an edge detect now edge detect is a bit finicky Depending on uh, what noise you use and depending on the scale, it's going to give you different results. I'm going to try to decrease the scale of the Gaussian noise. And let's see. You know what? I'm, I'm actually going to use cells. I feel like Gaussian noise may be a bit too blurry for the S detect. Let's try cells. Let's see how it's taking that in. There we go. Now these are way too soft. Okay, so we're gonna decrease the edge roundness so they're a bit more sharp. And now, how do we go about blending um, these two things together? Well, we got a blending now for that. Choose blending, and blend. Sorry. Uh, we want we want our main piece. Uh, on the background so we're going to choose this on the background and this on the foreground now we want to be subtracting like i'm not going to go over the blending modes if you are familiar with photoshop or any to the editing software you, you might recognize all of these um, but we want to subtract so in order to subtract we have a method for that but that's not exactly what we want. We want to multiply, which is going to take the black values and put them on top of the, of the other one. Um, the problem that we're getting here is that it's not putting the cracks on, a, on our tiles. It's putting it all over the place. Um, now, the way I, I go myself about doing that is uh, I use the float fill. And with this float fill, I'm going to use float fill uh, random grayscale. And now we only get the cracks on some of the tiles. Uh, the problem also that we're getting now, it's like some of them are fading away. Some of them are like more prominent. So in order to fix that, there's another node. Um, so select, select, histogram select, there we go. So if we just crank the contrast, and if we connect this in here, we start to see some of the cracks there. Um, let's see, can you tweak the scale with this? Um, let's try tweaking the scale something uh, let's leave it at seven then uh, and if you want to increase the number you know what we did here it's like we increase the contrast to one so we we get like full values it's either um, black or white there's no in-betweens because we don't want uh, we don't want it to be blurry but if we increase the range we start to get more of them and you can see in here how we're getting more cracks uh, okay, so now um, why don't we add some color? Now that we have the float fill, it's really easy to do that. Float fill to random color. 
and we can just expose the the base color in here connect it and we get like different coloring let's see hmm oh that's because some of these are transparent uh, okay yeah sorry I was thinking why are we getting black values let me see let me go over something real quick yeah it's because of the luminance random uh, okay so now we got color we got some variation on the on the map actually I want to mix these two things because the cracks at the moment with the color you cannot really see them so we're gonna mix again I'm gonna use the blend we want this on our background and we want this on our foregra foreground. Now you see something, it's happening here. It's it's like, um, it's red, so it means something's wrong. Um, so the problem there, it's uh, in here we're using grayscale values, but in here we're using color. So we have to add a gradient map to fix this. And now we want also to multiply those because and to get like black values. And if we connect it now, you can see we're getting some of the cracks here. Uh, lastly, um, one that I don't see used a lot is roughness on, especially on on VR chat worlds. I see a lot of normal mapping and a lot of color, but roughness is really important too. Um, one one thing that I that I hate about video games that I'm actually gonna do now <laughs> in in just a couple, in just a second, it's that they people tend to do things um more reflective than what they are in real life, and this is like a stylized option. Um, you know, like if you if you go for a completely realistic look unless you got a really really good setup lighting it's not gonna look as cool as some of the more glossy results that you can get with the roughness anyway um let's just add a grunge map here to prove my point let's go grunge map 04 we see we got some spots here uh and this is gonna be our roughness and you, you you can see now if we rotate uh, our our lights, we can see that we can see those spots there. How it's breaking the surface. Um, so the way it works, when you get black, and this is for the metallic template, uh, it's completely like uh, rough, so gl glossy if you want to call it. Uh, if you come from a specular background. And if it's white, it's it's not gonna be like reflecting as much. So let me demonstrate that actually with with a level node. So if we take the the white output, no, no, we're taking it to the black. No, if we take the black one to the white, you can see we don't have that breakup on the surface. If, however, if we took the white one to the black values and everything start, everything becomes uh, black. You can see the environment getting reflected onto this. Typically, uh, you wanna you wanna research your material and see how reflective it's gonna be on your world. Uh, obviously, there's a degree of like, you know, you got. You got your own license to do whatever you want. If you wanted to do it like super glossy, it doesn't have to be real realistic as long as it looks good. So, lastly, I, w I wanted to go over how you can support these maps. Um, the way you have multiple ways of doing it. Uh, one of them, if you say you wanted to export this one map uh, for whatever reason, say you want to make like a blood particle thing and you just wanted this crunch map as is. Um, so you can select it. You can select any map, and in on the 2D view, you got this floppy disk, uh, and it says "Save Current Images Bitmap." You click on that, you select your folder, and boom, there you go. Um, 
No, that that's just a bitmap image, so you, you're not gonna be able to tweak it unless you go to the graph and stuff. Um, I say you wanted to export everything because now we got like um, some base color information, we got some normal map information, we got some roughness information, italic, and yeah. So the way you do that, um, you go you go select the base material, right click and create output nodes and it's going to ask you do you want to create hidden uh, for hidden connectors just say no and now we got all of our maps here and you can just simply go select the graph here and choose export outputs as, as bitmaps uh, you can select which ones to export which ones not to export and all the jazz so that is basically how you can make uh, materials and this was really a uh, quick overview. This is the, the first one I did and just to wrap up everything I'm going to show you some of the other patterns I made. Uh, yeah, this is a wood pattern. Again, really, really simple to do with just one node. This is like, this is sort of like a studio thing looks almost like metal sheets as well but anyway you you get the idea uh it's really really powerful as i said you start working with height and from the height you can create your normal you can create your roughness uh it's really fun to use really simple i'm gonna link um on the description a full tutorial full tutorial on the algorithmic page uh, which you can follow along, it's completely free uh, as well. And it's going to show you more of how can you use this, you know, how can you implement, um, because in here, it, this was just a rough overview of things. Um, but anyway, I hope you like it. And in the future, I got like a world uh, tutorial coming up. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.